welcome to the Charles River Parkland Show. My name is Renata von Charner. I'm the president of the Charles River Conservancy. And we are very fortunate to have as a guest tonight, John Sears. Welcome. Thank you. John Sears was the MDC commissioner 1970 to 75 and the Boston City Councilor from 1980 to 82. So he knows the Charles River and its parklands very well. It's wonderful to have you on the show, um, Mr. Sears. And I understand that you really want to take us back 600 million years. Oh, sure. I, I think it's fun for folks who live in Boston. Um, uh, 600 million years ago, we are told by the geologists, there were two mountains in West Roxbury and Roslindale that were both about the height of Mount Everest. And it, the Merrimack River emptied into what we now call Boston Harbor. And that's the reason why the harbor or the mouth of the Charles looks so much bigger yes. than the little river Charles would have ever been able to, to form. But the Charles has such a lot of personality, um, starting in Hopkinton along with the marathoners and ending in Boston. And, and in that little 26 miles, it's actually 80 miles long or so. But I think it was because it looked so impressive at the mouth that a young um, Prince Charles wanted to have it named after him. On John Smith's map, that's what happened. But t take, us, take us back those 600 million years. So we have these two hills and... But well, there were more than hills and there was a volcano in Brighton. A volcano uh, in Brighton. And uh, we actually, uh, this is for Red Sox fans, um, Boston is a piece of Africa. Um, when Panjaya, that great big landmass, was all one piece, finally came apart and, uh, began, and these plates began drifting around. Um, the, the folks who are dusting up the Yankees will be glad to know that Boston and New York were two separate templates. And our, our little template came floating across the brand new Atlantic Ocean and plugged in. And uh, there, there were three or four little rivers um, but uh, the Charles was, was, was not the biggest, but it was one of the most interesting from the very beginning. Now tell us some of the things that allegedly happened on the Charles in the... In I think it's important, especially for uh, folks who think about the Mayflower, to remember that the Charles was occupied for 10,000 years or so uh, by the original Americans. I call them Paleo-Americans. I have... Uh, Loaned. I had a map that I could have shown tonight if I could have found it. Um, but I also have a book that it, uh, I loaned to Carl Hagland, who I hope has been one of your guests. Yes, he has about, several uh, times. Professor Horsford. And of course, Carl has written this wonderful book about the river. But uh, there was a book about the, um, the slightly nutty professor who thought that Leif Erikson had discovered the place. And they identified all sorts of trash pits as Norwegian or Viking longhouses. I loaned that book to Carl. I hear and now in, in the face of your viewers, give it to him. Uh, but uh, it, uh, it is a wonderful part of the history that the uh, Indians, uh, the oldest thing I think found so far was at Magazine Beach in Cambridge about 6,000 BC. That's fairly And that would impressive. have been an arrow, or what would they have found? Little pot, assured, mm -hmm. as they, uh, uh, archaeologists call them. But signs of life all along the riverbank, they, they enjoyed, because back then, of course, the ocean was lower at this period, about 25 feet. And the um, original Americans, the folks who met the boat, um, had uh, their fresh water from the river and their salt water to travel around in. And they lived essentially at the height of the tide. So as the ocean rose, then also the, um, the original Americans mm -hmm. moved upstream to water. So th right now, I mean, before the, the dam was built at the Museum of Science, the, the river was tidal up to the Watertown Dam. But so that, might have, that line might have shifted also when the, if, the, if the Atlantic yeah, Ocean was so much did. lower. And it was one of the reasons for building the original dam, um, I, I will surprise you by saying that I suppose we can say that I had a good deal to do with building the current one. 
but the old dam where the Museum of Science is, um, the whole idea was to keep scooshes of salt water from floating into the freshwater basin of the Charles. I don't think we have a map as yet, but... Um, Maybe we could ask for, for a map of the, of the Charles River. We have one, so we can pull because that up. Because of, of the freshwater fish um, in, in this lower part of the river here um, are, do, are not happy when they get a slug of salt water. And it is uh, uh, a good sort of um, scientific assignment to keep the, the two ecologies apart. Yeah, I understand there's a salt wedge um, in the lower part of the basin that comes in when, the, when they open up the, the bridge, I mean, the, for the boats. And then salt water comes in and there's a salt water wedge in there. Um, uh, well, there's an awful lot at the bottom of the river, as I'm sure your viewers know. Most of it is unfortunate. For many, many years, once the European folks arrived here, they ordinarily dumped their trash and household stuff into the river. Mm. And um, some of the largest mounds of unfortunate objects are opposite the Mass General Hospital and Harvard and, all, and MIT and all these august institutions. Um, but uh, people didn't know better then. Now we're doing our best to clean up mm. the mess. Now tell us, you say you were very much involved in building the new, the new dam. Tell us a little bit of what was the reason behind building the new dam and what were some of the, the we design had features. Some very serious flooding. If, if people will remember seeing pictures, there uh, was a village in New Hampshire, I think it's Alston, that was essentially flooded. You all have seen pictures of um, streets and, and highways covered over with water and people's cars floating around, and uh, why is it that the back bay of Boston and Cambridge don't flood? Well, the answer is that we did put a large dam. Uh, Professor Freeman built one in 1909, but it uh, did not quite do the job. So in the 70s, we built the new Charles River Dam, and we can pump against the high tide. The, the ocean will be two feet higher than the basin level. So that means you can push the water of the push, Charles River against push the it high out tide. Into the harbor. Yeah. And uh, prevent the, because if, if uh, the basin rose two feet, an awful lot of people would have wet basements and a uh, great deal of damage would be done. Yeah. So we did do that, and it's quite an art. The, 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 uh, the old MDC, now DCR has some people who have to think in advance if there's a flood surge coming down, <clears throat> they have to anticipate it. That, that, yes. And they lower the basin a, a couple of days before this surge Big rain, hits. yes. It means they have to pay attention to the weather reports and do their job. To, to get the water out so that when the rain water arrives, that... Um, it does not go into your house and mine. Yes. <laughs> 